and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works, and in collaboration with MAQ Software, we're bringing you today's video to explore their very exciting custom visual known as Forecast Using Multiple Models. Now, this visual is going to give us the capability to test time series models to forecast future values or predict future values based off of historical data. And we're going to get this capability because this is an R-based visual which gives us access to various statistical algorithms at our disposal. Specifically, we have four algorithms that we can choose for this visual to leverage. We'll have linear regression, exponential smoothing, ARIMA, and neural networks. And by choosing the respective algorithm, we can get predictive results. So we can take that element and then add that in to our Power BI reports. Now it should be noted because this is an R-based visual, of course, there are some R package dependencies that are required. But what's quite lovely is when you download and install this from the custom visual marketplace, this installation for these dependencies should happen automatically. But if for some odd reason this does not occur, you can always visit the GitHub page for MAQ software, and they have a guide dedicated to downloading and installing all R package dependencies for this specific visual, as well as their various other R based visuals as well. So let's head over to Power BI Desktop and explore this very exciting custom visual known as Forecast using multiple models. So here we are exploring MAQ Software's custom visual forecast using multiple models. And we can see in this very first screen, I'm actually showcasing all four algorithms in their respective visuals, as you can see from the titles themselves. Now, upon selecting this visual, we're going to see in the field area that we have two fields that are required, both of them. The first is going to be series and date and value. All fields will only accept one input value. The first one, series date, needs to consist of timestamps and they support various different date time formats and the second must be a measure. Now from here we do have the capability of manipulating and modifying various formatting options but this is actually going to be dependent on which algorithm we choose. So let's look at the four that we have available at our disposal. First we have here exponential smoothing and as you can see we have a small description of exactly the R function that's being leveraged, but this is moving into the area of data science. This is statistical, these are statistical algorithms, but this is quite a lovely visual and it doesn't require a deep knowledge of data science in order to leverage them. It's a very nice and easy to use visuals, but of course, if you do have knowledge in this area, you can take advantage of some of the options that we're going to see that present themselves when we go into the formatting area. Second, of course, we have linear regression neural networks, and ARIMA. So all these descriptions are included in here, but of course, these are forecasting algorithms and there's far more information that can be found available. These are algorithms that are used in various pieces of technology. They're not specific to uh, this visual whatsoever. These are used in the realm of data science. So you absolutely can get more details on this just by looking online. Now let's go back to the exponential smoothing so we can take a look at some of the formatting options. But it should be noted, depending on which algorithm we choose, there will be some different options that present themselves. So here, when we go to the format area, the first section we're going to see, which will control other things that will make, become apparent, is the algorithm in question. So as you can see, we have chosen exponential smoothing in this case, and we have a couple of options that present themselves directly underneath here. Forecasting units lets us know basically within the units of measure that we're tracking, so in this case I'm showing years, how many years do we want to predict? So my forecasting units represents, in this case, units for measure, and this is 10 units or 10 years. The split point, this lets you choose your starting point of prediction. And what we mean is, for the entire amount of data we have, we need to give a specific amount of data, in this case 75% of the data, we're going to allow our algorithm, the exponential smoothing algorithm, to learn and understand patterns of that historical data. And then we'll look and validate and test those patterns that have been learned against the remaining 25% to get an idea and get a score for how well these predictions, how well the patterns are learned and the predictions that can be made. 
So of course, we want to figure out and leverage the patterns that result us the best possible percentage, the best possible confidence level for prediction itself. So we can tweak this and allow more or less records to be given for that algorithm to be trained on is what it's known as. And then the remaining will be what is tested on. Underneath, we do see the ability to turn on or off the confidence levels. So if I turn this off and give this visual just one moment for it to reevaluate the context, we can see that the range that is part of our predicted results, the yellow bar here, disappears. Because this is telling us the line is our predicted value, but we have a plus and a minus, a margin of error in which we can say the value will fall between these ranges. That's what we mean by confidence levels. And this can be adjusted or turned off as we just experienced, depending on your wants and your needs. Also, if you did want to take advantage of a box cox transformation, it can be applied to the time series by setting a value here in the lambda section. So you can let this automatically happen, allowing the algorithm to decide, or you can specify a manual value here. As I mentioned, a lot of this is set by defaults uh, because you do need some knowledge and understanding of how these algorithms work. And here you can take advantage of that. Moving beyond the forecast settings, within the model settings, we do have the ability to adjust some of the tuning elements. These are model specific parameters by which a desired model can be trained. So by manual, we can go ahead and have options for error type. We can change the trend type. We can tell it if we would like this to be robust or not, which as you can see, indicating if robust fitting is to be used. This is going to be specific to the exponential smoothing. We'll notice if I go very quickly over to the regression model and we go to the format area for this, it's actually not listed. Linear regression, one of the more traditional statistical methodologies, very straightforward. We leverage just the default options here. Neural networks, though, we will see that we have options here for the model settings. We can choose decay, maximum iterations. You can set it to manual, or if we simply turn this to auto, this will be determined by the algorithm itself. It will adjust these items to give us the best predictive option. Now, manipulating these can give us better or worse predictive values, but you do need to be knowledge and informed on what these various parameters, how tweaking them will affect our respective visual. And it should be noted, things like the neural network, which is more of a black box operation, more of a deep learning algorithm, Sometimes it can take a moment for it to process and visualize those results. So as we make changes to these various settings, then we need to give it the capability to adjust. But notice, once that's been visualized, that the model settings, there is nothing available to us. I've set it to auto. The, the algorithm itself will make its best possible decisions. Going back over to exponential smoothing so we can continue to explore this, we can see we have other algorithm specific options. But underneath model settings, we do have the plot settings. These settings provide an array of choices that govern the appearance of the graphical plot itself. As you can see, we can specify the name of the title, background color, what is the observed, so that is actually the measured values, the historical values, what's the color for the predicted values, and what is going to indicate the confidence area. So we can see, we can dictate this, change the name of observation name, prediction name, if we choose. And we have other access items for formatting as well. Of course, the x-axis, we can include a zero baseline. Uh, we can do this also for the y baseline. We can control the color. Do we want grid lines or not? All of these very standard basic formatting elements that we would come to expect to have access to naturally is part of this exquisite custom visual. So hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this forecast using multiple models. And we thank you for watching our video. If you have any questions about this visual or need a similar business solution, feel free to contact MAQ Software at sales at maqsoftware.com. As well, for any of your Power BI training needs, be sure to reach out to us at Pragmatic Works by emailing training at pragmaticworks.com. Take care.